This is in Boca, an extremely rare cookbook series published in 1976 by Il Vespro, and the recipes inside are super funky. Speaking of funky, this is... Peter Boja. <gasps> I am a mechanic. Less is more. I do vintage European motorcycles. Why don't you have a mustache then? Um, because I ran out of wax. <laughs> And what does this salty kit from Queens have to do with these crazy cookbooks? It goes back to when I was about 17 years old. My very good friend, his grandfather, traveled to Italy, and he actually had a few of these books, um, and it was different regions in Boca. 20 regions to be exact, each fully illustrated, handwritten, and translated into English, Italian, and even their regional dialect. I never forgot it, because it was really interesting that it was bound in cardboard. Yeah, cardboard. Actually, it's unbleached recycled oatmeal paper bound in corrugated cardboard. And the illustrations inside the books were just like wild. 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 And I never forgot this. Fast forward uh, 24 years later, after I've traveled to Italy multiple times, I start to think to myself, where are all like the weird and strange dishes? Yeah, dishes like eels and Barolo wine lasagna and pork blood sauce, and pork wrapped in call, which if you didn't know, is the amniotic membrane that encloses a fetus. I always just think like when you go travel someplace, you're gonna have like the more exotic, strange flair. You know, maybe it was like from watching Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom too many times. Chilled a monkey brain. Because like if you're going through the trouble of traveling and you know, pretending that you're gonna have an interesting experience, why not go explore what you don't know? That is the whole point of leaving your house. And what's so unique about these cookbooks is they let you have that experience without even leaving home. So here we got these beautiful books, uh, a gorgeous kitchen, and a lot of time on our hands. <laughs> I'm sorry, what's your name? My name? Yeah. My name is Roberto Serini. Ah. I'm a travel writer, filmmaker, eater of food. <laughs> so you like to eat? Yes, I like to eat. I'm Italian. <laughs> All right there, Bobby Bacala. Why don't you tell us how come these books are so special to you? All right, well, one year Peter and I decided to ship our bikes to Italy and ride to Bogotaro, town where his family's from, which he's never been to. So when we roll in, the mayor of the town actually takes us around and introduces us to all of Peter's extended family, who he's never met. I mean, these strangers just open up their doors and bring us into their house. Breaking out the photo books and over a little cake and grappa, they're basically giving Peter this amazing gift of family. To cap it off that night, there's a Porcini Mushroom Festival, and we end up eating, drinking, and singing with everyone. Oh! I mean, it, it was fantastic. In the morning, the press even came and took some pictures to do a little story about the kid from Brooklyn that came home for the first time. I mean, I've been on a lot of trips, but to be with your best friend and experience something like that with them, there's no comparison. Also, the food was amazing. Did I mention I like to eat? Yes, you did. And it sounds amazing, but what does this have to do with the cookbooks? Right. So... When we get back to New York after traveling through this amazing country and eating all these amazing foods and meeting all these really amazing people, Peter gives me one of these cookbooks, one from where my family's from. And he tells me that one of the main reasons he's always wanted to go to Italy was because of these cookbooks. And I'm thinking, you know, this is just a cookbook, but if you let yourself get lost in them, they do this amazing job of capturing all the complex, beautiful things that make up Italy. From the food, to the language, to the art, to even how each region is fiercely different from another, but somehow all connected. And I guess how these books connected Peter to his family? They connect us as friends, too. At first glance, they do resemble traditional cookbooks, broken out into common sections. But that's where the familiarity ends. The recipes are strange and wonderful, ranging from simple soups to ancient dishes passed down through generations. Beyond the recipes, you'll find history, with illustrations illuminating what milkmaids and wine tasters looked like a century ago, to advertisements for the original Nutella when Napoleon ruled. There's also poetry between the dishes, 
and colorful paintings celebrating regional artists. And lots of these recipes are written in their original dialect, which is not only rare to see, but virtually impossible to understand. Fortunately, each book has a glossary that helps keep the language alive and you on track. So all of this begs the question, with cookbooks this profound, how do you even choose what to make? We sat around and just kind of pawed through all the recipes and tried to find maybe the weirdest, maybe the strangest, like anything that kind of hit a nerve with our stomach. So here's what we settled on. From La Cita Eterna, a Roman staple, the classic supplì, which is like an arancini, but more fun to say. From Pimante, the old school vitello tonato, because why wouldn't you want to try veal with tuna sauce on top of it? From Romagna, the curious rigatoni and sauce of the fegato di pollo, or chicken liver pasta, simply because it's not carbonara. And finishing off this meal in Milano with its namesake, cotoletto alla milanese, or milanese chop. While we were excited about the recipes we chose, they did leave some details to the imagination. Take the vitello tonato, for instance, where it simply calls for meat from the hind quarters, and then later just tells us to prepare a mayonnaise like we all know how. Should we be worried? No. Even though these recipes seem to be written by a forgetful grandmother, they still come out great. So, let's recap. These are all reasonably easy dishes to make. I mean, that should be the takeaway. Or not chefs. Not chefs. I mean, that's the... Welcome to Not Chefs. Yeah. I'm not a chef from Puerto Rico. And I'm not a chef. Yeah. It's good there. The trick with this meal is to do it properly. No good. cutting corners. We're not using jasmine rice. We're using the real aborio. That's the key. Don't laugh. He wanted to use jasmine rice. I had said it was a mistake. This is the part where Roberto's trying to be funny. I am funny. I'm very funny. Where are we going? Caputo's is one of the last great Italian grocery stores in New York. They have different olive oils. You could bring in your own bottle. They fill it up. They make fresh mozzarella every day. They hand make pasta. They have the most beautiful mortadella. Everyone knows about Caputo's fresh bread. It's it's the best of the best. All right, let's get some cheese. We need parmigiano, pecorino. We need a little mozzarella because we're making arancini. You know, I'm not making the arancini with the meat. I'm actually making the plain with the mozzarella. Yeah, and that's the what we're doing. doing. Mine is actually a meal. My hand is the uh, best when I make it. Yeah, uh, I end up making, uh, <laughs> <laughs> After I'm done, I roll them. It's a basketball. Wait a that's, a, that's a meal. Ba ba ba. Thank you. Grazie tante. Buona festa. Ciao. With all the Italian groceries squared away, the only thing left to source was the meats. And for that, we had to go to... Pino's. Pino's Prime Meats is on Sullivan Street. It's been there for something like 100 years. And it's sort of like the known, unknown, great meat market. People in the know are obsessed with it including one of my idols, Andrew Ray, AKA Binging with Babish. And I've mentioned it before, I love Pino's Prime Meats. It's where I got this pork belly. They always take really good care of me, so I thought I'd make them this gigantic porchetta sandwich. Andrew, oh, oh, he's, he's been coming for so long, and we didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, and then, then like, little by little, we got more friends. Yeah. Yeah. He's been coming for yeah. years, just the same amazing. like this. So it's like, you know, but you don't know. It's a small place, it's all family run, they have some of the best meat across the board you could buy, and the most reasonable prices. So it's like, you don't feel ever like you're going to some uh, hoity-toity, silly, bespoke meat market and everyone has fucking mustaches on, like waxed sideburns or something like that. You're hating it. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm not hating, damn it! If you get mad, you need to step back and count to 10. And if you can't get over your anger, get help. You walk in there and it's real New York. And you can ask them for anything and they'll make it happen. Okay, so we're gonna do the big Milanese chop. You said chicken livers? Eight, 18 of them. 18 of them? Okay. You're not poaching the veal first? It says poach them. Yeah. And you then poach whole. The, you poach it whole, then you slice yes. it thin. Really? You yes. poach it whole. So this yes. is why okay. you come here. Because that's, yes. that's yes. revealed on other, yes. Because okay. uh, my mom used to make it in Italy. And uh, they would cook it like a like a pot roast, and then uh, and then you would slice it. I'm gonna tie it up for you guys too, so it stays one shape. And you just take off the string afterwards to slice. Where do you live in the city? Oh, I'm in Queens, Bayside. Yeah, Bayside. Yeah. Oh, Astoria. Yeah, my cousins are from Astoria. Yeah. <laughs> 
Don't ask us to shave it. <laughs> we might end up with extra meat here. <laughs> Guys, I'm delicious. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cuter. You guys are the best. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Having sourced the best ingredients, we returned to Brooklyn, as it was now time to plan the meal. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so we begin. I was saying that we should start with preparing the risotto for the souplis. The rice needs to set a little bit before we start re-engaging the love on that rice. Okay. And we also have to immediately start dealing with our veal. Because the veal needs to boil, cook, and then set. And then we have the Milanese, we can pound those out. Yeah. Great. And we can also do the chicken liver pasta. Oh yeah, and that should be cool. We wanted to get those like flavors intermingling and chilling anyway in the fridge. Let's do it. Yeah. Dish number one. Vitello tonato. The ingredients. Let's begin. Capers, anchovies, potato, celery, and carrot, fresh eggs, and veal ready to go. The veggies, veal, and potato boil in a pot until it's perfectly poached. When it cools, make a mayonnaise. Take your mayonnaise, can of tuna, capers, and anchovies, and put them in a blender until they're creamy. When your veal is cool, slice it into medallion-sized pieces as thin as you can with a good knife. Grab your potato and slice it thin as well. Finally, assemble the dish with alternating slices of veal and potato with a good amount of tonato sauce on top. Dish number two. Supli al telefono. The ingredients. Let's begin. First, get your boreal rice cooking in the stock of your choice. We decided to make cacio pepe risotto, so you'll need pecorino and lots of fresh ground pepper. Then you're gonna to wanna to prep your flour, egg, breadcrumb, and mozzarella. Stealing a slice and eating it like an animal is optional. Mm. When your risotto is done, start making your soupli. Take a bit of rice in your hand, place a hunk of mozzarella in the center, and cover it with more rice. Compress it into an egg shape, then roll it in flour, then egg, then breadcrumb. You'll end up with something like this. Next, in hot oil, start frying them up while having a casual argument with your roommate. I'm gonna put hot oil in your butt. I would let you do it. The end result are beautiful, golden brown, perfectly, oh, wait a second. There we go. Perfectly fried rice balls with a thin, crunchy crust and creamy, cheesy center. Their balls of fried heaven are what they are. And if you're wondering why they're called al telefono, it's because the cheese resembles a phone cord that's stretched. Which in itself is amazing that the name of this dish refers to something that practically no longer exists. It's almost like biting into history. How do they taste? <laughs> what can I say? They're a knockout. Dish number three. Rigatoni and salsa de fegato. The ingredients. Let's begin. Chop your baby portobello mushrooms coarsely. And then add your fresh chicken livers into a food processor and set on medium speed until you get a thick paste. Get your water boiling. This dish cooks in the time it takes for the pasta to become al dente. In a large saucepan, add butter, olive oil, white wine, and your mushroom liver pate, and stir continuously over high heat. When your pasta is done, pour a decent amount of the pasta water in to thicken the sauce. Then, 
add your pasta and stir until fully coated. Chicken liver pasta was a wild card. We thought it was going to be too rich, but it was delicate and delicious. Pateiness. As you can see, we hated it. More if you want to know. Dish number four. Cotoletto alla milanese. The ingredients. Okay, let's begin. Then let's make a chop. Pound chop? Really, yeah, pound chop. Pound chop? We're pound chop. We're pound chop. The only way to pound that chop correctly is with a kettlebell. 25 pounds. If you don't have a kettlebell, it's okay. You can use a pan. The first thing you're going to want to do is separate the meat from the bone with a knife. Then, get to pounding. Moving outward from the bone, repeatedly beat the life out of your chop until it's about the width of a finger. And while getting it that thin might take a lot of work, it's actually extremely therapeutic. Hi, I'm Robbie Serene. This is called Italian therapy. <laughs> Oh boy, you want to try it? It's fun. Come on, get in there. Smack some meat. Questa notte vamo a comere tutto bene, eh? Puta madre che le pagano. Next up, coating. Crack a few eggs and scramble them until homogenized and frothy. Coat the pork chop completely in the egg wash. Then place it in a bowl full of breadcrumbs turning and coating several times, making sure the cutlet is completely covered. Make sure to press the breadcrumbs deep into the cutlet. Is it possible to have pan envy? Yes, it is. Well, guess what I do. The cutlet, when done correctly, is truly a thing of beauty. It deserves a closer look. In a large frying pan, melt a good amount of butter and olive oil on medium to high heat. Yeah, that much butter. Then add the cutlet. Make sure to fully cook one side before turning. Failure to do so will ruin your cutlet. While the other side cooks, Continue to spoon the brown butter over the top of the cutlet. You may think this is a lot of butter, but... How you make it? This is how you make it? This is definitely how you make it. I mean, come on. <laughs> Look at it. Finally, slice up some fresh tomatoes, add a bit of lemon, oil, oregano, and salt, and prepare a nice arugula salad. Jump in. Like any good meal, it would be insipid without friends. Yeah. So we invited a few over to yeah. nosh on the Nutella Tonato, gorge on some perfectly fried soupies, be pleasantly surprised by a chicken liver pasta dish, and crush up perfect pork cutlet. <laughs> For two guys who aren't chefs, what's brand pronounces for no leaders? <laughs> The praise was welcomed, but we can't really take credit for it. These recipes are special. They're simple, but deeply tied to a country whose cuisine is as sacred as religion. These books are like scripture. Their illustrations and prose tell an ancient story and can transport you immediately to another land if you let them. In the end, I think we were all looking for something more than just the perfect bite. I think we were looking to be surprised by something we do every day, to maybe find a little magic in the ordinary and share that with a few good friends. 
Fortunately, the spells contained in these cookbooks were potent, and we were all able to take a trip, even if it was just in Boca. takeaways first of all you have to get the best thing oh, yeah. you know you go to the guys that know what they're doing they're local guys you know that's why they're there that's why they're special that's why it might cost more but if I'm cool, it's the best you shouldn't be eating the same foods you normally eat all the time even though you know how to make them perfect go out of the comfort zone go out of the yeah. comfort zone trust them different and Italian food's super easy it's four ingredients it takes 10 minutes yes I mean it's not and don't rush it you guys cooked everything in the big food yeah. You didn't turn into three days of No, no, you but... Did. Well, but... My uh, mother I does. think that's a thing, though. Well, but your mom... is amazing. She knows. I have to go call her. Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, a nice big sauce I made with meat the bowls, chicken roasting in the oven, potatoes, two cakes, and black and white cookies, fried broccoli, and apple betty. 